so today is a beautiful day here in New York City and I thought that it'd be a good idea to go out, grab some coffee, sit at a park and do a quick Q&A for you all. It is so loud here. This is the third park that I'm at today because everywhere else is just so packed with people. So I got a bunch of questions and comments for my work week in a life as a data scientist video. So thank you all so much for showing it so much love. And I went through and read every single comment and I picked um, a couple questions that I wanted to answer. Just a quick disclaimer, I don't think that this channel will grow to be like a data science channel. So I apologize for all of um, you guys who requested more like in-depth data science videos, like coding videos, tutorial videos, lesson videos. That's just not something that I'm comfortable posting on YouTube, nor do I feel qualified to. And that's just not where I want my channel to grow. So the first question is, what is your academic background? I went to a four-year college here in New York, um, and I studied computer science with a minor in economics. The second question is, how did I get into data science? Coming into freshman year as a CS major, I thought that I was going to build like iOS apps for a living. Yeah, I can build apps and I'm gonna get rich like right away, but that really wasn't the case. That freshman year summer, I actually had two different like part-time unpaid internships, one doing mobile development. So I worked in like React Native and built for both iOS and Android. And then I also worked uh, as a web dev, both at like two very small startups here in New York City. Learned so much that summer, but also learned that uh, I didn't really want to go down the uh, mobile development route. And then come sophomore year, I was just a little lost of like what I wanted to do. And sophomore year was actually when I actually started to take CS classes. So your algorithms and your data structures. And they were okay. Um, I did fine in those classes. It just never like really clicked well with me. I felt like I was pretty mediocre. And so uh, sophomore year, I actually went to a CS mixer at my school where we get to talk to faculty and they get to present their research. And there's this one professor who does big data research. After his talk, I was super interested. He was like showing some like mapping of spatial data, really cool viz and stuff like that. And I was just immediately intrigued. So then um, I approached him after the mixer and I was like, hi professor, like, I'm Julia, nice to meet you. Uh, would love to be your research assistant, what do you think? <laughs> and um, he was like, oh yeah, like you can email me. But I was like super adamant. I was like, no, I want this experience. Like, I'm so interested, like please give me a chance. And I think like I pestered him to the point where he's like, okay, like you can come to the lab, we can put you on like a trial project and see how you do. So I spent the winter semester of my sophomore year just doing research at home instead of having an actual winter break. And then I started um, doing like a project led by a PhD at the lab. And then after that, he was like, you're doing great. Um, we can actually like promote you to be an actual research assistant. So at the research lab, that was really where I developed a lot of my data science skills, worked with like Python a lot there with Hadoop with Spark. Yeah, learned how to make like data pipelines, um, really developed like all of those skills there. So super grateful for that opportunity. And then the summer of my sophomore year, I actually was a software engineering intern at a bank. I realized that I actually didn't really like software engineering. It wasn't exciting to me like how data was. So during my junior year, I tried really hard to get a data science internship, and I think because I had that lab experience, it really helped push my resume in front of everyone else's because I had the word like big data on there. Um, so that's how I kind of got into data science. The next question is, how did I get my first DS internship? Trailing off of the last answer, based off of my lab experience, I was able to get my first data science internship. And I actually went to a conference and my only goal for that was like, I'm gonna get a data science titled internship. I don't care what company it is. I just wanna get that relevant skill set. And you know, it's fine if I don't work at 
thing this summer if I don't work at Google or Facebook. Like I just want to be a data scientist somewhere, learn that skill. Industry does not matter. I just want the title. And I think that was a really good mindset for me to go into recruiting with. And I came out of that conference with an offer as a data science intern at a big aerospace company. And so that was my first data science internship. So the next question is, did I attend a master's program? Um, I did not, but I actually did apply and got accepted to a couple of master's programs uh, my senior year of college. And this also trickles into the next question of like, what degree do you need to get into this field? Do I need a master's degree to get a job in data science? Um, obviously, like I can't speak for all of the job postings and all the companies out there, but personally, I do think that you can get a data science job without getting your master's. I am an example of that, but I do believe that having a master's will give you that competitive edge, and there is a reason why I applied to go to grad school uh, my senior year of college, and that was because I wasn't getting any data science job offers and I really wanted that. But at the end of the day, it worked out. I got a job in DS and therefore I didn't need to go to grad school. But there's a lot of pros to grad school as well. I've been thinking about it a lot actually, even after I have a job in DS. I go back and forth all the time. Like, I just really like learning and um, I just really want to be an expert in this, in this field. So does that mean that I should go back and do a master's in data science? Is that even needed? I'm not sure, but um, just weigh what opportunities you have on hand if you really want to be a data scientist and you're not getting any interviews or you're not getting any jobs, um, then I would say consider getting a master's. Um, it can never hurt. So. So these are a little bit more random questions. So the first one is, can people join my like TA sessions or the course that I'm teaching or my office hours? And the answer is sadly no, unless you are enrolled in that university and enrolled in that course. You guys cannot come to my office hours, although I'd love to host you all and answer all of your questions. And then I also got a lot of questions on how I stay productive and um, I made a video about that actually. I'll link that. I guess in the cards up above, I go through kind of like what motivates me to do things, how I stay organized, all of that good stuff. So I won't get into that today. And then the last question that I'll address today is how did I get involved in the nonprofit? So I actually didn't know a lot of people were interested in, in the nonprofit work and it actually warms my heart that people like, you know, appreciate nonprofits and like what they do and show interest in it. So the nonprofit is called Send Chinatown Love, and it is a New York-based organization that provides both fast and long-term relief to small Asian-owned businesses here in New York City. So as many of you all know, the pandemic really impacted the restaurant industry. I mean, it impacted everyone, but it specifically, at first, it impacted the restaurant industry a lot. And so a lot of restaurants had to close, and specifically, Asian-owned businesses were just proportionally impacted just because they didn't speak English they weren't on like delivery service apps a lot of xenophobia a lot of racism during that time and it's still prevalent today it's sad to say but it is true you know I saw the problem a lot of people saw that problem and one of my friends specifically he went on to Instagram posted a story saying there's this problem looking for people to help solve it let me know if anyone's interested so I was like me I volunteer I really want to help I want to be a part of this I initially volunteered to be an engineer and we were trying to look for a digital solution uh, to this problem to help digitize a lot of these small Asian owned businesses. But when I actually attended the first ever like call for a nonprofit, I realized that everyone else there was an engineer and they worked at like really big tech companies. We weren't lacking in engineers, but we didn't have anyone to do a lot of like the business side of things to outreach to merchants. So um, at the beginning phases of the nonprofit, I literally wore a lot of hats. I did a lot of different things. I did a lot of partnerships. I did a lot of merchant interviews, had to speak in both Mandarin and Cantonese. But in, but in like more of like a professional setting, which is something that I haven't done before. I 
launched a lot of things on social media. If you scroll back down to our social media, like the first like 10 posts were terribly constructed by me. Um, and yeah, it was very hectic um, at first, but now I've kind of transitioned to just leading like an overarching team, leading um, business strategy and marketing and just doing that. So it has been really fun and it's given me a lot of purpose during these hard times and I can't imagine like what I would have done for the past year if it wasn't like working on this and yeah I'm just getting so sentimental thinking about it because we just reached our one year mark which is crazy because you know we're still here today because the problem exists um, but it feels good that I was able to do this during such a tough time and give back to a community that I really care about. I met some freaking amazing people through this, learned a shit ton, and yeah, if you guys are interested in supporting or learning more about the org, I'll definitely link it down below um, in the description box. I just wanted to end this video off with one last comment, girl aren't you tired? Yes, girl, I am so tired. <laughs> I am very tired all the time. I actually don't get a lot of sleep because I just do a lot of things and I stress really easily. I'm not a very pleasant stressor. And I know this about myself through that video. A lot of people think that I'm a workaholic and yes, I actually am a workaholic. But also keep in mind that, you know, YouTube videos are like week in my work life those are definitely highlights for sure um, sometimes I definitely do skip out on exercising I actually skip out on it a lot there are weeks where I'm really motivated to exercise and I do keep that routine up and there are weeks where I'm just so freaking tired that I can't wake up from my runs or I don't have energy to work out I have weeks where I'm just so unmotivated to do anything like that happens to me too please do not just look at my video and think like I'm that productive a hundred percent of the time um, but I am going to cut myself some slack and give myself some credit that yes I do work really hard uh, most of the time I do do most of those things but there are definitely days where I struggle to do everything and stay productive as well so that is it for the video today I apologize if the audio is not that great because New York City is very noisy and I made a bad decision today just filming outside uh, but yeah thank you all so much for leaving such great questions and showing my videos a lot of love um, yeah I'll see you all next time <laughs>